Hi, my name is Tim and today I want to show you a simple technique to create a lock footage great without a lot. Yeah. This technique is extremely powerful to create a stylistic filmic look and it's often used by professionals to create a high-end orange tear look. So let's see how it's done. So most grading tutorials on YouTube usually use a primary wheels or curves on DaVinci Resolve. There's nothing wrong with it and in many cases it works fine. But if it comes to a more powerful and technical spoken, a really better way to create log footage, we have to choose another way. Let me explain some short things in front of our practical tutorial. <coughs> the primary wheels in DaVinci Resolve and similar NLEs 2 were designed and developed to offer a classical set of controls. To manipulating normalized video with the assumption of the BT709 color space. But in the case of lock footage, we are on a foreign terrain because this footage isn't normalized, right? So please keep in mind that the lift, gamma and gain wheels do a great job on a normalized footage, but on lock footage this parts have the boundaries. Why? The lock encoded media formats have an other mathematical background than the normalized BT701 formats and that's the only reason. The math is more complex than the usual normalized media, though therefore we need more control, or in other words, more control gives us more flexibility yeah. and more accurate results. And in addition, the lift, gamma, lift adjusting comes from classical, the analog film. The origins of this controls comes from telecine and tape to tape color correction. I could explain it in more detail, but that's another story, so just remember this fact for the moment. Another important fact you should know is that the three tonal ranges shadows, midtones and highlights overlap. Let me explain it on a simple graphic. Here on the graphic the waveform is just for demonstration. So now look where the shadows begin and end on the waveform and where the midtones begin and end and finally where the highlights begin and end. And can you see the overlapping area right here? That means if you affect the midtones, you will affect the shadows and highlights too. Not so much, but there's no hard edge or border between the zones. The midpoint of such an overlapping area is called pivot or in DaVinci Resolve is it called low range and high range? Okay, Tim, that's enough for the theoretical boring stuff I hear you all screaming. Mm. So, let's jump in. Here's a clip which is our reference for demonstrating the better technique for grading a lock footage. It chose my friend Thomas and it was shot in Futifilm Avlog. But this doesn't matter because this is a technique for lock footage in general. So you can do it with any other lock footage too, no matter if it's an Ari Lock C, Sony S Lock, Canon C Lock, or any other lock footage. Aha. Okay, first go to your color wheels panel and instead of saying on the primary wheels, choose the lock wheels. You know, first thing on every grade is to adjust contrast or luminance, and you can do it by just increasing the contrast value right here. Yeah. And the lower bar, let's say to around 1.29 in this case. And now you can change the overall pivot if you want. This pivot is similar to the pivot of the primary wheels. Really? Really? But now comes the interesting part. Remember, I told you the pivot point between mids and shadows and the pivot between mids and highlights, right? Huh? These little fields here are our pivot representation in DaVinci Resolve. The low range is a pivot between mids and shadows and the high range is a pivot between mids and highlights. That's the main difference between the primary wheels and the log wheels. Ah. Let's see what they can do for us. Let's say we want to create a simple and subtle teal shadow part without losing the neutral blacks in the shadows just to bring out a bit more cool depth in this shot. Just adjust the midtones a bit in this direction and now 
lower the low range to let's say 0.1 around have a look at the shadows now it's great nope. and if you look now on the waveform too you will recognize the moving areas with this adjustment you can much better control which part of this footage should be affected and this in a much more differentiated way okay now let's push the highlights a bit in the opposite way just a bit to create a very subtle orange push for the mids and highlights in the skin tones let's say for example and if you now decrease a high range to around 0.37 or something in this area you get a very filmic look of your luck footage without LUTs of course you can go further and now you could apply another serial note and switch back to the primary wheel it's just doing some more grading stuff oh no but you can end up here if you want yes so I hope I could help you a bit for a better understanding what the luck wheels do in DaVinci Resolve and what you can do with it. It would be great if you hit the subscribe button and if you have some questions just let me know maybe in the comments. So thanks for watching, bye and have you all a great time.